Welcome to Don't Everybody Leave. Say howdy to Mac King. Howdy. I am Mac King. Welcome to Don't Everybody Leave. I'm very excited to be doing a show. Uh, we haven't done one in uh, about a month. Uh, I've been out of town and doing stuff and uh, getting vaccinated, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, speaking of vaccinated, I believe everybody on the show, uh, you know, all the other hosts have all been vaccinated too. And uh, Nikki, would you bring them all out? <laughs> oh. <laughs> we can hug. <laughs> <laughs> oh. No kisses from you? Yeah, I'm still keeping my distance. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hey, uh, welcome. So. I guess. Hey, can we, can we one thing before we get started? Yeah. <laughs> You're not at your own house, so you brought a painting to hang <laughs> up. Something to put on I the wall. I don't it. feel comfortable if there's not something autographed behind me. <laughs> it's going to show up. Yeah, it actually works really well. I feel he's it. Yeah, but, yeah, till your head blocks it. I just know. It's, I know it's just behind me. Just knowing it's there is enough. <laughs> All right, back to you. Uh, for those of you who uh, aren't regular uh, watchers. Jacob always has uh, some sort of album cover or piece of memorabilia uh, behind him on the wall. And we're all in my house. This is the first time we've done this. It's very exciting. Nice iced tea. And uh, yeah, we got, uh, we got drinks and uh, clink, clank, clink, clink. <laughs> and uh, here's to you. Thanks for tuning in. Um, I'm so excited. This is going to be cool. <laughs> Should we talk about some dead folks? Uh, yeah, you got a dead guy? I got dead people. Dead people. Yeah. Well, uh, like I said, we've been, it's been a while since we did a show, so a lot of people have died. Yeah. What do you got? I got some facts here in case I need them, but I don't think I will. I bet you uh, won't. First person I want to talk about is a lady named Ann uh, Boydens, who died. Well, she died. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, there she is. She, she happened to be married to Kirk Douglas, um, but she was a pretty cool philanthropist in her Which own right. Which one is Kirk? Uh, that's really none of your business. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, she was married to Kirk Douglas for 66 years, and she was his uh, second wife which is crazy. <laughs> yeah. And the, the first wife was 66 <laughs> minutes. Yeah. No, he was married for like 15 years before that. He died earlier in the year at 100 in 2020 at 103. 120, 20? Yeah. At 103, she was 102 and died at the time we we're recording Holy this like a week shit. ago. Yeah. Um, and they started the Douglas Foundation together and raised $120 million for Children's Hospital, which if you divide it by how long they were alive, is not that yeah, impressive. Yeah, hardly anything. <laughs> yeah. But it's pretty good. Yeah. 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 That, was, that was like a cup of coffee. Yeah. Uh, Nikki, do you have a, a second picture of them? It's, it's two old people. Um, that's just, there's couples goals for you. There's them when they're oh, both over yeah. 100 at like a baseball game. Holy crap. Yeah. Um, she was a, a producer in Hollywood early on. That's how they met. So uh, she was a cool lady. And uh it kind of sucks. They're both gone now. They're kind of the, two of the last people from the golden age of Hollywood. Um, so that's one. I got one more. Good. From the golden age of Hollywood. The great character actor, Norman Lloyd. You got a, a, a picture there? Yeah, that's Norman Lloyd on Alfred Hitchcock Presents. <laughs> he was uh, the oldest living working actor. He died at the time we're recording this last week at 106. And he was still working. Saboteur, great Hitchcock movie. He, yeah. Yeah. Uh, he was in a, I mean, the, the last film he did was uh, Amy Schumer's movie Trainwreck. He was in that in 2015. Um, but I have a quote here from him that I wanted to read because it pertains to Mac. Oh, yeah, he's he a said, big fan. I like yeah. Mac. <laughs> <laughs> One of my favorite Norman Lloyd quotes is he, uh, he said recently I was playing good tennis up until 100. Wow. Yeah. So that's that's a guy we all those of us who want to be in show business forever. That's a pretty yeah. I believe 106 is just before forever. So he gained <laughs> right just on this side of forever. Well, he had yeah. saved a little money. Jesus. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> working at 106. He has to keep working. <laughs> Got to do those TV spots. But I, I I wholly believe he's able to be 106 because he never stopped working. Not possibly. Yeah, I think he yeah. liked it. I don't know. I think, you know, Tommy Cooper kept working. He died on stage. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I, I don't yeah. think it's an overall, you know, yeah. statement. Yeah. But yeah. I, I, I find that the people that work never stop working are sharper and, oh yeah, you know. Yeah. What's Max' excuse for being kind of dull? Well, it's been throughout his life. Well, I, I haven't had a show in a year. And a that's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> I think I'm excited to see what you look like when you're funny again. <laughs> Me too. We'll see. Hey, can I do a magic trick? No. Oh, Jesus. 
We, we, <laughs> All right, let's, we discouraged back, that back, on this show. Back to you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, what do you got? Uh, really? Uh, yeah, we're let's gonna see. We're going to do a magic uh, trick. So and uh, you and I, since, since we're all fully vaccinated, we went to, to Vinny's show. We had a great time. Oh, so you're going to do one of the tricks? Yeah. Vinny's tricks? Yeah. But better? <laughs> uh, Vinny gives everyone a card like this. Uh Let's see, that's Vinny Grasso, totally mental. Oh, got an ad on the back. What I kept going. Well, that's oh, yeah, yeah, I remember those. Merch, yeah, yeah. There's a little, yeah. Yeah, a little QR a little code. souvenir yeah. card. Yeah. So I came up with this. If you watch closely. Oh, oh we should watch it in the screen. Yeah, right? let me turn it so you can see Vinny's face. Watch closely. Just a snap. And it stays the same. <laughs> and the secret is... I have two of them. <laughs> <laughs> I won't tell anyone. All right, that's all I got for you. <laughs> well, it's so funny. I'm like, I know he's holding two cards. I wonder what he doctored up that other card. <laughs> I wonder what he doctored up that other card to say when he when he flicks. Does that you change? give me way more credit than I didn't write anything for the show today. I just had that in my pocket. What's your favorite Kirk Douglas movie? My favorite Kirk Douglas movie is Twenty Thousand Leagues Under the Sea. It's also my uh, favorite. Disney film. It took general. me a long time to realize that 20,000 leagues, they didn't mean down because that was out the other side of the earth and into space. Yeah. They meant traveling around underneath the sea. This oh, way. I never knew that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I'm learning it just now. Yeah, I thought it was down, but I didn't no, have no, the mental capacity no to know that that's all the way through and into that. space. Well, also, not only that, leagues is not a measure of depth. It's a measure of distance. And when you're talking about depth, it's fathoms. <laughs> so it didn't take 20,000. Right, but that's, fathoms. yeah, but you can, uh, when my, when I scuba dive, it tells me how many feet I am. Uh, that's because you haven't gotten to a fathom. Hey, what if this is our first fight? What if we get like what if we got really I pissed? Right. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Mine yeah. says I'm six feet down. <laughs> <laughs> it's it's Mark I'd like to be six feet up. Somewhere. Mark Twain. Yeah, exactly. Mark Twain. No, in that movie, Kirk Douglas kills a giant squid with a with a harpoon to save Captain Nemo's life, and he has a delightful pet seal. And he dresses really boss. He does. He wears a, like a sailor outfit that's tight. And yeah. he has like, it's like red and white stripes. Yeah. I ruined a lot of my parents' fences harpooning them with sticks as a kid, pretending to be him. I feel like if I was on a submarine going 20,000 leagues, I'd be in my pajamas the whole time. <laughs> like, yeah. why would you get Those dressed? were his like pajamas. Yeah. You've, seen, you've seen that picture, right? If Looks the viewer. A like <laughs> olive oil. I have those same pajamas, yeah. yeah. If the viewer at home is wondering what the fundamental difference between Kirk Douglas and Michael Goudeau is, yeah. one of them made an effort to look fucking cool all the time. Yeah. <laughs> there was a I'd forgotten there's a seal. Yeah, it's got it's got a collar and everything, and it does it rolls up in the bed, rolls itself up in a blanket in the bed. It's the best movie ever. We should watch better that than tonight. Jaws, yeah. huh? We should watch that tonight. Don't p poke holes. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, maybe we should bring out our guests. We have I guests. Love this story. Yeah, they, they, well, yeah, yeah, because they'll have nothing <laughs> interesting to say. Yeah, they'll have <laughs> nothing interesting to say, and so they, they've said it all. Um, man, when I, I mean, the first time I saw this show, their act, I believe was when they did the world's greatest magic, mm -hmm. and. I believe because they were on the world's greatest magic. <laughs> he knows where I'm going. <laughs> I believe because they were on the world's greatest magic, Jacob almost certainly has their introduction memorized word for word. Well, they were on so, world's greatest magic five, which is a really good one. It's one that I watched less. So I might not. Uh, oh, did I put you on the spot? I should have. When it you comes to the unexplainable, <laughs> ESP, mind reading, the paranormal, I'm certainly a skeptic. But what they say is seeing is believing. And after seeing this next act, I'm certainly much closer to being a believer. Please welcome from Canada, the finest act of its kind anywhere in the world, the Evisons. Oh, very much, Jacob. That's right. It's me. Notable two-person mental act, the Evisons. Thank you, Jacob. I think the Evisons. Thank laugh. you so much for having Please me. Please welcome today. a man who wasn't born until 20 years after uh, you. <laughs> yeah, Nick is here, but almost not here. His internet oh, is shit. again. <laughs> Nick seems to be having a great time. We can't hear a damn thing he's saying. Oh, fuck. We, we heard you say, oh, fuck. I heard him say, oh, fuck. We get the highlights of every sentence. Oh, fuck. Good. Okay. But like 10 seconds after I said it, I'm sure. Hey, Nick, you want to introduce Jeff and Tessa? Okay. Why don't you just bring them on and I will. I fucking did, fuck I just face. heard you say, okay. 
<laughs> All right. The last yeah, do it again. Four words. But but I really, learned. but really sell it this time. <laughs> From Canada, please welcome the finest act of its kind in the world, the Evisons. Hey. 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 Good to see you guys. I, I, I wouldn't want to see this motley son, crew of sons of bitches anyway. Uh, well, I can still see you even with the blindfold on. I see all, you know? <laughs> What's in Vinny's pocket? <laughs> Never mind. <laughs> yeah. That's not a, that's not a roll of dimes. So. <laughs> when you picture me in your mind, can you give me a better jawline? Yes. <laughs> You're you. so I, handsome. I would love that. I need yeah. these. I can't see without them. I don't know why I need the blindfold. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, you guys. Hey. That freaked us out with Nick. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not just you. Oh, you didn't know that was coming? No, it was, uh, oh, we had nothing yeah, to do with that. That, that, was was that, was, that was great. Actually. It's like a life goal of mine to introduce you as if I were John Ritter and Nick decided to just fuck it Oh, up. that was so impressive, Jacob. Yeah. yeah. Wow. We haven't heard that in many years. So, so uh, but, uh, but I bet you guys have it memorized too. How close was he? He was very close. We don't have it memorized, but as soon as you uh, said the words, on, it all came on. together. Every TV Shabbat introduction you have memorized. <laughs> Those guys work all the time as opposed to sitting home memorizing other people's shows. <laughs> That's what I do. Uh, yeah. uh, he, you know, the guy that when you're watching a movie preview and you hear, in a world, that guy. Uh, yeah, um, yeah. As soon as you guys came on stage, before we even hear you say anything, Don LaFontaine says, uh, absolutely nothing has been prearranged with any audience member. Oh, that's great to know. I didn't know. <laughs> busy coming up with an act that's sellable. Uh, I remember. I remember pretty much every intro. On the, I mean, my dad taped them for me off VHS, and I watched you guys over and over again, and Guy Hollingworth over and over again, and learned my first magic tricks from this joker over here. Um, wow, that's right. You did all that session, didn't you, Mac? <laughs> Giving it all. Did you guys I, notice? I, I exposed the sacred secrets of magic. You'd Howdy, I'm Mac King. Welcome back to the Mac King School of Magic. Jacob is so used to us being in little blocks on the TV, he has to think about, do I point this way to Mac yeah. or do I point that? <laughs> this is you were getting that down. <laughs> I've done all of these staring at the camera, right? So you get you get to train yourself to look at the camera. <laughs> now all my friends are right here. Should I look at the camera or, or should I look at Michael when I want to talk to Michael? I don't know. <laughs> Do you guys have memories of, of shooting uh, World's Greatest Magic? Listen, I can't, we were playing pool. I can't remember what city it was. We were playing pool with uh, Gary Kurtz, yeah. uh, Anthony Blake from Spain. There were a bunch of us around the pool table in the bar and the front desk came and said we had a phone call important than it was Gary Willett calling. No cell say. phones at that time. Right. Yeah, right. Yeah. 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 Remember so that. He ran wow. up to the room like, oh, okay. So that's how we got the call. But um, again, I was really sick that show, uh, like deathly ill. <laughs> and <laughs> I'm surprised they made it. Yeah. yeah, but that's probably the sickest like ever. That was a bad, that was a rough one. But you know, you get on stage and yep. it's, yeah, you're yeah. fine. It's it amazing. Way that works. But yeah. yeah, fever and everything else. So. Uh, it was hot in Las Vegas. I remember back then. <laughs> yeah. 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 I think my memory of that too was, uh, I, I don't know. One day we had rehearsal before that uh, World Speed is Magic show. We thought we'd go for a walk. So we went outside Caesar's Palace and we got to the other end of it. We walked right back in like, what the hell were we thinking? <laughs> I, I started out as a street performer here in Vegas. I still do it occasionally. and Like uh, yesterday. Yeah, that's true. My first performances back in over 14 months were yesterday on the strip. It was pretty. How are the crowds there? Are there is it busy? It's packed, and you know, wow, I was, you know, crazy. You know, and when, awesome. if, yeah, I needed a volunteer. I would say, you know, I'm fully vaccinated. Is there somebody here that's fully vaccinated that's comfortable coming over? And it, it worked out. But people are just so happy to be back to life. It was, it was kind of emotional, which is funny for you know telling jokes and doing card tricks or whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I forgot how much I love this. Yeah. <laughs> there's, there's, you know, there's that stereotype of, of British politeness. And I had a crowd once around that time, and uh, like four minutes into the show, uh, the mother of an English family came up, put a very nice tip on the table in the middle of the show, and she said, we're very sorry. You're quite good. It's just much too hot for us. And she walked away. And I was like, oh, you know, this, this is a street show. Most people just leave. Like, it's the nicest thing anyone's ever done. Yeah. That's amazing. Wow. Yeah. Vinny, are you back? Is your show still running? You have a live show, right? Yeah. And uh, I added Thursdays, so I'm doing four days a week now. Oh, very good. Glad for yeah. you. I'm doing zero. <laughs> yeah. The rest of us are all doing, add up to zero. 
It, collectively, we're doing four days a week. Four okay. days. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but June 22nd, it looks like for me. Uh, projected date. Reopen oh. is the projected reopening. So. And I was um, June 21st in Texas. Look at there. It's Goudeau and I together. Oh, yeah. Austin yeah. awesome. and yeah. I are driving to Texas. If you're wondering who's more bummed about not performing, you'll notice that these two guys, when they said they've done zero shows, they gave the OK symbol. Right, yeah. <laughs> None. No, yeah. Uh, they don't mind. Yeah. Zero. <laughs> Zero. <laughs> so, yeah, we should talk do. about what they do. That's right. So you said in your uh, recitation of the world's greatest magic introduction, John Ritter, right? Yep. The, the, one of the John Ritter years. The greatest act of its kind anywhere in the world. The Epicens. The Epicens. <laughs> Nick the fact. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff goes. Jeff is very extraneous. <laughs> We're gonna use that in our promo. Oh, yeah. That's it. Yeah. 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 Are you aware that you have a vestigial husband? <laughs> <laughs> what I what I want to know is uh, when did you guys? meet and when did you guys start performing together we still haven't said what they do yeah so it's i would I mean, <laughs> you, wait, can you correct me yeah. if i if i say this wrong um you read you're, you're a team who reads the minds of the audience uh yeah we're a team that uh tessa reads the minds of the audience because i really don't do anything in yeah that's true i told practice. you that you were extraneous and that just you got to laugh but that's the truth that i connect with you better now and i see in my mind a small card there's letters numbers an id card isn't this your driver's license d it is to his driver's license yes yes, yes. And I was wondering about you. Uh, do you prefer Matt or Matthew? Is it Matt or Matt? <laughs> it it is. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I repeat, describe it now. Call his last name, Tess. Matthew. It's a short name. It's just like Quinn, I think. Is it Matthew Quinn? Yeah. Have we ever met you before? Never met you. Have you got a middle name, yes or no? Yes. And the initial is on the driver's license test. But I think I've got it. Very good. And I think it's an R. It's Matthew R. Quinn. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah, is. That is, yeah. 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 <laughs> and, you know, when people ask after the show, well, that was great, but why <laughs> is he necessary? I think that's, that's for us, That's that means it works. That's great. That's um, really well. Yeah. yeah. So the less I can be... Uh, obvious to the audience as to what I'm doing, then the better. It's really me and the audience, like a Phil Donahue with a microphone and Tessa on stage and people are standing up and, and holding things or uh, in some in some case, just thinking about stuff from their past or what have you. And Tessa identifies anything from objects to names. Mm -hmm. uh, so, but traditionally these acts have been object acts where it's uh, it's all about the item that people hold, and but for us, it's more about the the names and if it's an object like a ring, then we want to know more about that ring and where did it come from and and right. was it your great grandmother right. and what was her yeah. name? Yeah, and, no, and it's not just a mysterious Dymo labeler. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> not just saying the name. Yeah, it's a, it's yeah a more that's personal. right. I mean, it's yeah. I mean, that, like anything, at least for me, what's what makes it. The best and better than the others is the the human connection between not between not just between uh, the two of you, which is significant, mm. but the 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 connection between you and the people in the audience. Yeah. And and one of the things also that I feel like makes it great for me watching as a an audience member is uh, even though you're not talking to me about and my object or my past or my relatives or my experience, I still, you manage to somehow still relate it to the people who aren't directly participating. And I think that's a giant achievement. Don't you drive a Toyota? You drive a Toyota? Oh, come on. Yes. We didn't talk about this. Incidentally, his first name. I think I can say hello to Keith. What's your name? It is Keith. Hey, Keith. Awesome. Never he's, met before. He's looking for the hidden cameras. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would describe your show then as it's Tessa's show and Jeff is just her full-time host. 
so she travels and but she just in her <laughs> rider it's jeff has to be the host it's, yeah and i make him run all over the audience until he's sweating yeah. to death I mean, seen what, uh, what color m m's do you demand that he have for you backstage <laughs> <laughs> you don't yeah. have any weird things yeah it's like those the acts i mean they used to i mean i never knew anybody specifically who did this but i would read about like cruise ship acts who said you know i want to bring my wife well, she's not even on stage. Oh no, she operates the remote control for the floating ball. <laughs> <laughs> and so, <laughs> and you know, and there wasn't any remote control for any yeah. floating balls. Right, right. Yeah. I mean, I've known you guys for a while, and I've never, never asked you this. But I, how long? When did you? When and how did you guys meet? And then when did you become an act? Or was one? Which one was first? Uh, well, we they, were an actor. They, they had an act for a while, and then they met. Well, no, I mean, like, yeah. well, when did you, like, you know, become a couple, I should say? Like, did you become a couple? We, we did a magic act. We did an illusion act and a dove act. And a we lot of people don't know that, right? So, no, uh, I didn't well, know that. that. Oh, yeah. Uh, will you send Sick us of pictures of that? Yeah, no. I might. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> sure. Yeah, you don't, you don't want to carry more crap around, right? So you figured, okay. Mentalism. Mentalism. <laughs> um, do you guys have photos of you doing your, the bird act and the American. illusions? Because we'll stick them in here unless you hate that idea. Oh, yeah, yeah, we, we do hate them, but we'll... Yeah. Uh, well, you know. I had such a great bod then, so I love it. <laughs> <laughs> I would actually say that one of the best tricks about you guys, and I will insert a world's greatest magic photo here, is that you look the exact goddamn same. And I oh, no, we don't, it. but. Yeah. So, yeah. <laughs> what, was that? what year was that? 1998 was okay. the fifth one. Yeah. Look at you. God. Wow. Wow. No, I'm telling you, he's like a fucking savant. Yeah. It's not Ooh. like he Queen is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's, yeah. Well, I'm here's the thing. If that's what you'd want to be a genius. At. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, right. Some people can solve Mad world problems. Oh. Yeah. I don't have anything memorized that would help me ever. Like uh, that's you. not true. Oh, that's true. I have one thing that Juan Tamariz invented that I have memorized that helps me a lot of the time. But I meant like, like if someone needs me to put out a fire. Yeah. I'm like, no, but I have all the intros from World's Greatest Magic memorized. Yeah. Also, conversations that I've had, that stuff tends to naturally stick in my head. Movies that I love are all in there. And wow. One time, this may be banal, I don't know. One time, Mac and I were hanging out at Kudo's house, and I said, what do you guys want for dessert? You want uh, ding-dongs? And Mac said, I don't know the last time I've had a ding-dong. And I went... I do. <laughs> <laughs> oh like, my god! I came before I even said it. Like, I remember the day and what you said about the ding dong. <laughs> you guys were on uh, Penn and Teller Fool Us, and I thought you were flawless. Did you prepare differently for that? Because you did. I would. Uh, I'm going to admit my ignorance here, but it seemed like you did the stuff you're most comfortable with, the stuff you're known for on that well, show. Did you prepare for that any any differently than you do for? A regular show and can you describe uh, they, there was a there were a lot of surprises on that show when we were in the green room you know how you're in the bay yeah. everybody's done for us right um so in the green room just before we were to go on uh andrew one of the producers came down and wanted to review what exactly we were doing yeah right because we, we hadn't gone over it yet with michael close uh, how you or johnny you, thompson or right? johnny. yeah he's like you guys know what you're doing we don't have to do this and we're like okay because we had no idea what we needed to tell them right they were like we don't need anything from you so and, and stuff really isn't planned it's kind of like i know what i'm going for but you don't always get a or b you might get c and so we said well it might be a driver's license that no no you can't do that so they were ruling out what well, we said, maybe a cell phone. You can't do that. <laughs> so there was nothing with a brand on it, nothing with people's. You could do the first name, but not the last name. Um, you couldn't show a, a driver's license because they thought, well, if somebody was in the audience and they saw Matt King stand up with his driver's license, they might call their friend at home and say, hey, Mac's not at home, go and raid his house. <laughs> and and so it's just the legal department was so uptight about everything. Wow. Yeah. yeah. So we had to limit it to, you know, generic. I think we got like a guitar pick and a comb. And <laughs> so no other no other TV spots have told you you can't talk about this, this and this. Fools is the only one so far or, or not that restrictive. They've been less restrictive. Yeah, not about first or last yeah. names because it's it's important for us to get the first and the last name. It's one right. thing to say the first name, but then the last names are where it's interesting. They looked at us, we were on stage, walked on, said hi, and then Teller went 
<laughs> looking at us, whispering. Uh, but anyway, um, because we had been to their show in Vegas oh, just a yes. couple of months before, and Penn I've never seen their whole, show until then. So, and he did this whole bit where how, how he hates mentalists, and we'd already committed to the show. We thought, what the oh hell? My God, are we got it because he knows we're in the audience. Oh man! <laughs> so we assumed that we were walking out, and it was that was it. We're, yeah. Our careers were over. Yeah, and and Johnny called the first year or whatever or the year before to ask us to do it. We said yes, but then we changed our minds and we said no. Yeah. Uh, we don't think it's right for us. Yeah. But, but oh, we're glad we did it. It was no, awesome. It was good. The best best show ever on, yeah. for Magic, I think. And they were and the really, thing. I mean, they really complimentary about you guys. They loved you guys. Uh, this is one of those rare acts where the more you know about it, the more amazing it is. I can say this without any fear of contradiction. I have never seen better at what you're doing, and it is just fabulous. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Well, the coolest another... thing that happened, which I wish they hadn't edited out, was um, oh, that's right, yeah. yeah. So we did the we did the hundred dollar bill that um, Penn brought. The bill, I am sensing numbers only. Forget the letters. I'm thinking there's a nine, followed by an eight. I'm thinking that's a, correct. Thank you. A two. Yep. And then an eight. Eight. Yep. It's a little hazy now. I want to be sure if I get it right. I, first, I thought it was a two next. Yep. And then a four. Yep. And this is where I lose you. Can you get with the last two digits? Is it a three and a six? Yes, it is. It really is exactly that's it. She got the that's serial exactly. number. And then when it was over, the only thing you see at the end is, is Teller giving me the bill. But what he actually did was he ran up, he bowed down and bowed his head and passed me the bill. And in my head, I'm going, oh, my God. <laughs> that's great. Best promo clip ever. Yeah, yeah, and you don't have it. <laughs> yeah. I think what those guys got across, and what I know they feel is like, as another two-person act that does impossible things, they tried to do some of the stuff you guys did and never got it to the level you guys did. So that's a pretty big yeah. compliment. And <laughs> said a, a real lovely thing that got cut uh, on, on my show. Like his first thing, he was like, boy, I really hope you fooled us because this is an act we want to see again in our show. And that didn't make it. Oh, um, oh, oh. Well, you did great on it. You yeah. were awesome. Twice. Right. Right? Yeah. Yeah. If you just have no shame, you can do a nice TV spot. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody can do a two full of spots. <laughs> so I feel like your act of, of mentalism acts, I think, I think without exception, looks more, I guess the word would be real. Than any others that I've seen, and I'm curious when you like, do you ever meet? Do you do meet and greet after your shows? And do people ever talk to you as if it's been real? And how do you? Uh, how does? It, what are the, some of the craziest things you've heard? And how does that go? That's a vague question. Sorry, but yeah, <laughs> no, but we really walk the line. I mean, you know, clearly for those who don't believe, they don't. They, I don't think they perceive that we're suggesting that they should believe. Uh, but for those who do believe, we're certainly not suggesting they shouldn't believe. So we're we're kind of uh, we're we're not committing either way. When we transitioned into mentalism, we had met a couple, uh, Tommy and Liz Tucker, who were our mentors for the Second Sight Act. And they were, their heyday was in the 70s and you know 80s. I mean? uh, they were just fantastic. I think to this yeah. day, I don't think anybody could touch their, uh, the, the capabilities that they had with this. It was incredible. And, but Tommy was in a wheelchair at the end. And so he he taught us directly. We went down to Boston from Toronto and worked with them one-on-one. Mm -hmm. -on -one. So when we started doing it, we needed places to work it out um, because we, so much rehearsal involved. It was a couple of years of just constant rehearsing. And then we are finally able to do it on a cruise ship because we are in remnants of a hurricane condition in the Caribbean and all the shows were canceled. Hardly anybody came out that night, maybe a hundred people in the mm -hmm. audience in the whole theater. And the captain insisted that there was a show for those people. We couldn't do illusions. That night we're supposed to do fire reading and the broom suspension. But with the ship going, it was a floor show back then. Yeah. Uh, so that's when we broke in the second side act. And Tessa had never, ever spoken on a microphone. Well, I had, but not like that. You know, just a little. Not in the show. show. Yeah. At a wedding. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so we did 20 minutes that night and ended with the, the serial number. And yeah. it just killed, like, that's all they talked about. And we were doing impale, the impalement illusion and yeah. some pretty big things. And, and, and yet all they talked about was the second, the mind reading act. So yeah. that sold us. Once we heard that the next day, we're like, okay, we know where we're going to next, you know, not really. I would like to be doing more shows than you do on a cruise ship. 
uh, but I might like to do one every now and then. But one show a week, I'm a, I, I, maybe my ego's giant, but I like to be on stage a little more than that. Oh, well, you would have been perfect for uh, Jeff Hobson's illusionarium on the ship. <laughs> right. Two shows a night, six nights a week. Go. Right. Perfect. <laughs> So love that. That's the best. <laughs> yeah. That takes all the pressure off of any show. You know what I mean? <laughs> you two shows a night, you go, I don't care how it went. Yeah, I got it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, you were in Follies, and how many? Yeah, you we guys- did two shows a night, seven nights a week with Lance and those guys back in the Follies Brugere. Back Is that? Night. Wow. Seven nights. Jeez. No days off. For a year. Man. You put the things off to your day off. <laughs> yeah. Not even a laundry day. Yeah. <laughs> well, we would get up, we would get up at like four in the morning sometimes to drive up and go skiing in Brian Head, which is like a three and a half hour drive. And then we'd drive back and do two shows. We, you know. But you were 20. We were back I was gonna say that had to be like 20. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And also not a dancer in the show. Not a dancer. <laughs> they wouldn't be skiing. No, they wouldn't do that. You they you were just juggling shit. Yep. Exactly. <laughs> Telling jokes and juggling clubs. And, or hats. Yeah. and if you'd like to use that audio clip to intro you on stage, he just juggles shit. You just juggled shit. <laughs> <laughs> Our first show back is uh, in July at uh, where was it to be? <laughs> That's true show business right there. One of those places where there's shows, and we're going to be um, part of one of one. We're going to do a show there. And yeah. yeah, I think out of all of us, right. the show has the show with the highest chance of dying, right? Yeah, probably. Right, six foot tall unicycle and knives and torches and stuff. At sixty-two. Yeah. 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 Oh, you think I'd come to my senses? Wait, but wait, it gets have, a more. Yeah. Have you been on the unicycle lately? This morning. Yeah, I do. Uh, I do three minutes a day right now. I've got to get up to about ten. <laughs> now we've been with apple eating. One leg hurts really badly. I haven't been apple eating at all. Is that, oh, wait, is that is that the landing leg? No, that's the <laughs> leg. When you stand still on a unicycle, you you're pushing on one leg back and forth. It's called idling to yeah. stay in spot. In one so place, that, make the wheel go back and forth. So my right leg is worn out. Normally, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it's huge and muscly. Yeah, when he wears shorts, it's yeah, jello. Ripley's. <laughs> believe it or not. Have you been uh, rehearsing regularly through the whole pandemic? No, not at all. Now that I'm wow. six weeks out from a gig, I'm frantically riding my bike and exercising and juggling and you know, counting throws, timing everything I do to make sure I can do it long enough to do a show. Well, because wow. if, you, if you're curious, riding a bike is about half as difficult as riding a unicycle. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a math. It's a math. I see. Yeah, yeah I get it. Two and one. <laughs> this is a, this, one of the cool things about being in being in person is I can turn to you, put my hand on your shoulder, and patronize you like right here. <laughs> really <laughs> well. So cool. Yeah. Let me just compare our careers, and then I shut up. <laughs> I, I, it just it just dawned on me that nick never came back right no, he did for that? a little bit but... i know it takes a long time to miss him doesn't it <laughs> <laughs>we could try it now. Oh, really? Oh, I don't know if I could remember all the stuff. Yeah, you could. You could. <laughs> okay. Well, uh, not the blurb, but yeah, how See, would we? Uh, I can't even remember the trick. <laughs> 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 Didn't he just you say, oh, yeah, 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 no, I can't remember how to do the yeah, trick. Yeah, but the process. Okay, so Jess will, will turn around. Jess will turn away. <laughs> and then, um, or you could even get up behind me, Tess, because you're going to have to be behind me. Oh, yeah. So well, it's going to yeah, be a reverse not, thing where Tess. I don't have to be behind you for the beginning, but okay. Yeah, but yeah, she'll, turn, she'll turn away. Okay. That night they had no idea. Okay. So she turns around. So, uh, Vinny. Yeah. yeah. Hold up uh, any number of fingers. She's can I, I even show on this camera? Like she's uh, she's facing there. How about that? Yeah. Any number of fingers. You can use one hand or two hand. It doesn't matter. And I'm not going to by by the way. I won't say anything. So at, by the when you show everybody the numbers, whatever number it is, from that moment on, I'm not going to say anything. My, <laughs> Okay. So, Vinny, don't say what the number is, but you've shown the number, right? Or you? Yeah. 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 Okay. 
All right, my eyes closed and I've turned away and I'm gonna turn around and <laughs> I'm gonna make some of this up as I go. <laughs> uh, I want you to think of that number. I'm gonna try to get thoughts from Jeff. So project it to me, but I'm gonna see as Jeff thinks about it, if I can get what it is. I really don't know if I have it because of the way it was sent through. Jeff's head. Yeah, it's difficult. It's there's, difficult. There's a lot of detours. A lot of filler. Nine. Yes. 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 <laughs> Are they gonna? Are you gonna teach? I want to know. I want to know how to do it. You don't know how it's done. <laughs> Do you, know, do you know Jacob? He's a street, he's a street performer. He don't know Dick. I feel like really? I do you know so it's just yeah. It's Michael, 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 Michael doesn't know. He's a sure. non yeah. I just think. Uh, do you know Vinny? I, not specifically. I mean, oh, really? I, I could think of ways to do yeah. it, but I don't know what they're yeah. doing. No, I, I didn't I, want I'm, I'm okay. certain I know that method. Yeah. If yeah. you if you guys are up for it, I think our audience would love to. Yeah. If you don't. Yeah. Mind, sure. I'm just that's curious that's ways that Vinny's thinking of. Well. But well, they, they all involve taking. Well, we don't want to give away other. I know, I know, I know. But they could always edit it. I'm just, I just want to see how his mind works. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I like it's just uh, country you know, your your teeth, and if you hold your, that's, she's yeah, touching I my temple. I think that that's what it is. I think it's it's yeah, this no, you feeling feel, the muscle yeah, in yeah, your head. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, really? yeah. So I gave you. I think we could have done a better set. It's the worst number possible. I know. I should have said one hand. I know. I was trying to say tell him one hand, but yeah. Yeah, I can feel it. How many was that? Yeah. Three. You, that was yeah, just, I mean. Hey folks, Jacob Jacks here. I just wanted to jump in uh, to give a slightly more detailed explanation of the uh, thought sending, uh, guess a number of fingers, mentalism trick that the Evisons so graciously shared with us. Since we were joking around, uh, we didn't say exactly as clearly as possible how that trick works. So it seems like just by sending the thoughts, you can tell what the number is. When you touch the person's forehead, who is of course, or temples, who is of course in on the trick with you, uh, it's very simple. They're clenching and unclenching their teeth. So if you put your teeth together like this, and you squeeze, unsqueeze, your temple actually moves a tiny bit. Now you can probably actually see it here on camera. If I clench right there, very easy. You can try this on yourself. You can feel it. And you just clench and unclench the number of times of the number that you saw, but your partner didn't, and you can secretly tell them. One, two, three, four. Two important notes. Don't say the numbers out loud like that. No one will be fooled. Don't do it on your own head. No one will be impressed. Anyway, hope that helps. Uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Did you ever see the thing with the rope? I was just thinking that the same thing. I didn't want to give it away, but yeah. 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 Uh, yeah. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, yep. where, where like we would hold the ends of, and you wouldn't have to be taught. I mean, it mm -hmm. would be just, you mm -hmm. know, and you could, I could send it to you through the rope. Really? Like yeah. You don't even need a can. We don't need a can. <laughs> 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 yeah. We're in the future. Anyway, it goes over gangbusters, and you know they can that's learn fantastic. it while we're doing it, and kids can yeah, be no, involved. That's great. My favorite thing. You can explain to them how favorite that is for so me. So Jacob uh, has an obsession. Uh, yes. Yeah. He is a, a, among Jacob's obsessions. There's are, one we can talk about. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, we can. There's one we can say on the YouTube. Um, <laughs> He is for stories, people's stories of their hell gigs. And, you know, do you have like one of the worst or the worst show that? That's fun for you to talk that's about. That's fun for you to talk about. Yeah. Oh, I, mean, yeah. I have a couple yeah, that yeah, I don't yeah. even want to bring up in my brain to tell people because it just <laughs> makes me. Trauma. It's trauma. Yeah, traumatizing. But if you asked any variety act in Toronto or the oh, area yeah. uh, that worked back in the 80s, 90s, 70s, maybe. They probably would all say the same gig. Yeah. Every spring, the Lion, I think it was the Lions Club, one of those service clubs. Rotary Club. Rotary, okay. Well, Good for you. Yeah, well, I have good reason uh, to remember it. Fort Dover, Ontario, which is up on Lake Erie near Niagara Falls. They did a fish fry, and it was always strippers, but they were old, uh, retired strippers, like in their 60s and 70s. 
and and variety act. Everywhere. So they would do they would uh, do an act stripper, act stripper, and the the deal was a, it's a fish fry. So they all they'd all have these finger uh, sticks of fish, but. Every year they would throw their fish at the axe, but they started throwing them at, at the girls. And that was, you were warned by the agent. Yeah. Okay. You have to be prepared. They're going to throw fish at you. Um, so the stage was littered with broken fish fingers everywhere, all over our props. Uh, but, and the agent, her name was Zena Cheevers and Zena was an old showgirl girl herself. But by the time she was an agent, she had to be in her seventies, oh, eighties. Yeah. And, She's the type of agent, if your pants were, if your trousers weren't pressed, while you were on stage, you'd walk right up to the front of the stage, you need to press those trousers or, uh, <laughs> yes, we can't hear you. Yeah, yeah, we'll not pop over more, we can't see it. And we're like, oh. <laughs> But she got up on stage, because Tessa said, well, I don't want to work if they're going to throw stuff at us, because it would, usually they'd have like, uh, a comedy magician or juggler, but they never had an illusion act. Then we did the second sight act. Yeah, we did so, too. I don't uh, want to be doing second sight and boom in my face. <laughs> yeah. It was a got up and gave everybody a lecture. Now you oh, don't throw fish at the next time. Yeah. <laughs> We thought was, she was going to make it worse, actually, but yeah. But they, uh, we are the at the time we were the only act in history that had never had fish thrown at us. So them. while we worked in fish spattered props and the stage was full of fish, they never threw it at us because Zena yeah. got up and gave them a lecture and scolded everybody and told right. them not to throw fish at us. In, uh, I believe I've asked everybody that's come on the show that question. Nobody's ever had to perform on fried fish. That's pretty <laughs> fantastic. Yeah. I think they still do it too. Yeah. I'm trying to think of what uh, the worst things I've ever had thrown at me. I like that there's more more than one instance of that. I, I'm trying yeah. to think of any. I, I mean, there must have been back yeah. in the day. I mean, I, you know. I worked at a beer garden where all the acts were doused in beer and had hot dogs thrown at them. Aren't there like venues that, that were like chicken though, wire? So. Yeah, that's, that's that's usually that's bands. Right. Right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, like in like in Mike the Blues Brothers. Club. In the Blues Brothers, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> this was unreasonably <laughs> delightful. Yeah, yeah. thank, thank you, you so, so much. much, you guys. Uh, we, you know, you know, I love you both, and I love your acts, yeah. and but I love oh. you as people, and. Thank you for coming on here and uh, whiling away the hours. <laughs> oh, this is so special. This yeah, is awesome yeah. to be able to do this. Thanks for having us. So good to see you all. And love Lovely you. Lovely to see you. Much. And love you. A complete stranger. Jacob, I love you too. Oh, well, I'm in yeah. small doses. Yeah, it 40... takes time. Yeah. So it takes time. <laughs> yeah. I'm good for 45 minutes when you're separated by the safety of a computer. That's right. right. Well, uh, hey, we're going to close today, as we always do, with a quote well, from my Nikki good first. friend, uh, George Clinton. Uh, but uh, first, thanks to the Evisons. Uh, thanks to Michael, Finney, Jacob. Um, the briefest version of Nick <laughs> DeFat. You know, that's kind of the best version of Nick DeFat. Uh, on a happier note, here's a quote from George Clinton to sign off with. If you got maggots in your brain, everything you think is going to be rotten. <laughs> See you next week. Thanks a bunch. Love you all. Ladies and gentlemen, we guarantee that absolutely nothing has been prearranged with any audience member.